Alright, welcome back. I'm going to give you a demo for how to design or trace over your own sneaker footwear um, product design. And how it starts is by first finding a reference photo. So you want to make sure you find something high res. Um, I actually clicked into the Nike website and found a really, really high res photo. So that's a good place to start. So something like this, really, really large, high res. You want to be able to see all the stitches and all the pieces where the leather attaches to the rubber. Um, each little piece will need to be traced out. So you want to make sure you have a really high res image to work with. Um, it can't be pixelated or blurry. You're going to save it to your desktop and then bring it into Illustrator. We're going to lock it down. So we're going to click on the photo and then hit Control 2. That's going to lock that image down. And what you want to do is you want to get out your pen tool. Um, you want to make sure you're on stroke only. So you're going to fill your stroke. I like to fill it with a bright color, something I can see. And make sure your fill is on clear. That means red stripe. So if you're not sure where to find it, it's right there. Um, and just make sure you have um, a color on the stroke with no fill. Then you're going to get out your pen tool. It looks like this and it says pen tool. And you're going to start by analyzing how this product was created. So you're really going to look at the stitching, um, the construction of it. And before you start tracing, really start to think about analyzing um, the materials used in creating this. So the rubber sole is its own piece. So that would be its own um, trace right there. And you'd want to connect back to the original starting point. So every um, thing that you're drawing right now is all going to be closed paths. So I'll just do a little piece here because this little um, tongue leather strip is its own piece of leather. You can see it there. And I'm just going to click and hold and drag and click and hold. And I want to get back to the starting point. So that way that little section would be able to be filled. So remember you want to Keep in mind that everything you are tracing over needs to be filled, so you always need to come back to the starting point. So as you click and hold and drag, remember to always click back on the point when you're doing those curves. And it's okay if these lines overlap because I can always put this one on top of, let's say, this one could be underneath. So you can see how that um, the green is now underneath the purple. So it's okay if the lines overlap. And as you go through this, you're going to start tracing around um, the areas by the material that it's constructed in. So you can see I'm going around this leather piece here. And then when it hits the swoosh, it kind of stops. The swoosh is going to be on top of that. But instead of me tracing around the swoosh, which is really difficult, I'm just going to come all the way back here. You can see the stitch here connects up and all the way back to start. And there's a reason for that, that I did not include the swoosh because that's going to be a separate piece and that's going to go on top. So that line will be covered and I'm just going to keep going. So you can see here, to there, to there, and back to there. Oop. So you can see how I'm tracing each thing separately. So make sure that all your paths are able to be closed. And I'll just kind of show you what that looks like as I fill these into different colors. Uh, just so you know that each section has to be a closed path. Okay, nothing can be um, just a stroke right now. You really want to work on f getting everything um, outlined first and kind of stroked out and then we'll go in and fill at the very end. I'm only filling just to show you the concept of having um, closed paths. So that I think I got all the laces there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my arrow, plus arrow, um, or you could use the black arrow, but you're going to hold shift and you're going to click on each path. You're going to click on the actual line and it's hard to tell because I used a purple stroke and the selection is blue. But that's all of my laces. I'm going to hit control G and that's going to group them together. Now the reason I want to group my laces together is because laces like to travel together, right? You don't want to have to move and recolor each lace individually. So that's a grouped set of laces and you can see how I can quickly change the color. So if I decide oh, I'm going to go with blue laces or yellow laces or red laces, um, you can see how quickly it is to change those. Um, other things like these little holes, you can just use the um, circle tool or the ellipse tool 
to show you some final areas here. So as I start winding down to the end, you can see this um, area here with the soft kind of um, mesh material. So I'm going to trace around that section. Remember to click back on your points. So click back when you're coming out of a curve. And I'm going to come up to here. And then this rubber piece is going to sit on top. So I don't have to worry about tracing around that. Really try to work uh, smarter, not harder, right? Really think about um, where you're going here. And this green piece would be on top, as would this red piece. So for this, I'm just going to kind of cut across. And then I'm going to connect back up here. So that's a little um, cheat, right? Because this piece can be sent all the way to the back. And then that way, uh, you won't have to worry about um, this stuff lining up. So always try to cut corners where you can, but just make sure in your mind <laughs> that it's actually going to work that way um, when you're done with this. So once everything is traced out, I would encourage you to keep everything as stroke only and really don't fill anything in until the very end. The next step is to create dashed lines and we're going to do this in order to replicate um, the dashed lines here in the construction of the garment, which are either seams or places where it's been sewn. So again, you want a stroke with no fill. You want to get out your pen tool and you're going to take your pen tool. I like to always use a different color for the seams just so I can uh, tell them apart because things can get very busy when you're looking at a drawing like this. And I'm just going to follow along with my pen tool around the uh, seams. Now this is the only time in the tracing where you're not going to connect them back. We've already connected all our paths, so all of our paths are filled are, are filled for now, but with the, the dashed line with the seam, you don't want it to connect. So when you get to the end like this and you have nowhere else to go, you're going to come back and click on the black arrow and that's going to end uh, the seam for you. Now when you click on that line, we're going to come up here where it says stroke and you're going to click on dashed line. You want to change that to probably two points would be good. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, two points is great. So then you're going to take out your pen tool again and you're going to do the second dashed line. And you're just going to keep going around all of these dashed lines uh, to create all those seams. Remember to use the black arrow to end it when you're done. Okay, so once you have all your um, your closed paths traced out and all your dashed lines traced out. You're now ready to start filling in. So now's the time you're going to get out your plus arrow. You're going to start to click on each part of the shoe and you can fill it with a color. Now I'm going to make these, let's see, I'll just pick like a light blue for now. Uh, I am going to keep a black stroke. Let's see how that looks. And this, then I can just use my eyedropper. So if you want to copy a, a color or even copy it, but then maybe offset it a little bit, like the lining might be a darker color. Um, you can just keep using your eyedropper to recopy those same colors that you're using. So if you are starting to use a lot of the same colors, uh, it makes it easy to just use that eyedropper. So, and uh, here's the part where you can kind of get creative and you can make these shoes, you know, whatever kind of color that you want. Um, so you can get a little bit more creative with it. And uh, don't be too discouraged if you feel like it's um, filling in the wrong colors or the wrong order. Like you can see I lost the, uh, the Air Max logo there. So what I need to do is just go back to take the fill off and find this and then go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Now I can fill this in and that will be on the top still. So it's important to always uh, just check that it's coming in the right order. If it's not, if you're starting to lose stuff, um, you can figure out where that is by just going back and kind of picking apart. Like you see, I lost that piece there. So let's bring that to the front first. And um, I'm going to hold shift and also take the seam with it and the lace. Object arrange, bring to front. Uh, you can see that piece obviously has to get sent to the back. So I'm going to take... Um, this piece and I'm going to say object arrange send to back. And that should fix it even though it looks like it's disappeared. Don't worry, it's still there. Uh, it's just in the back. And now this piece we have to bring to the front. So let's hold shift and grab all these pieces including the shadows that I traced and the rubber sole and we're going to bring all of that to the front. There we go. 
Now these things I traced as shadows. I'm going to fill them in with a gray color and then I'm going to lower the opacity just to make them a hint of a shadow there. What should be happening now is if I swipe this, I can move it off and you can see that it's starting to come together. Now if you start to notice any dark areas like this, it means that you have nothing traced there. So you'd have to go back and fix those parts. So I had this piece sent to the back, that's why you don't see it. But now that everything is filled in, I can swipe around and I can drag that off the artboard. Now I can really see if there's any issues that I missed. Um, if I want to change all the lace colors at, uh, sorry, all the seam colors at once, there's a little trick for that. So you're going to click on one and then go to select same stroke color. Now this only works if all your seams are traced in the same stroke. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to make them all like a darker gray. There we go. And lastly, let's change these laces. Okay. So there's some details on the sneaker that were missing, right? Like the ribbed uh, lines here, here on the back, and on these parts. If you do want to include them, you don't have to, but if you did want to include them, um, you could create a pattern. So I'm going to show you a very basic pattern. It always starts with a perfect square. So you're going to take out your shape tool and just make a perfect square. And then you're going to take um, other shapes. So let's make some lines here with the rectangle tool and a little bit of gray. And we're just going to make a line like that. And we're going to replicate it a few times. And now I'm just eyeballing this of where they would fall to go evenly. Um, maybe one more here. Hopefully that works. And it's okay if we extend these out. In fact, let's extend them out on purpose, just so we know they're uh, going full bleed, that's called. Now we're going to take this square and we're going to hold control and then do C A F. And that pastes a copy directly on top. You want to take that on top copy and you want to make it clear and then you want to send it to the back. So when there's a square behind a image like this or a, or a pattern, uh, it's it's almost like a cookie cutter. Okay, so this is our cookie dough, right? And then this uh, square that we put behind is the cookie cutter. So now we're going to swipe that whole thing and drag it into the swatches palette. If you don't have your swatches palette open, it's under window swatches. And once you drag it into the swatches, we can now use it to fill areas of this shoe. So we're going to use our plus arrow and click on just one of these areas. And then I'm going to click on my swatch palette and you can see how I created the stripes in there. So I'll try it again here, there, and I think that there was some in here, right there. And lastly, uh, there were some over here. Now it is going to change the color back to what it was. Uh, but that's how you can get those horizontal stripes or something like that. Now if those stripes are too big, you can see they are really spread out. You can swipe the whole thing, hold shift and scale it down, and then swipe the whole thing and drag it back in. And now we can try it again. We can even hold shift and select multiple sections at the same time and then fill it all at once. So now that looks a lot better. Uh, it's giving me more of those narrow stripes, which is what I was looking for. Uh, and that looks a lot better. Another kind of cheapskate way to do it is and search mesh vector swatch. Now let's see what comes up for that. Copy image. Paste. Not bad. So let's just do this. Ready? We'll drag that into our swatches. Okay, and then we'll click this area here and we'll fill it with that. And you can see how that fills. And there's some mesh over here as well. I'm going to unlock, so object unlock all. I'm going to move that photo out of the way. I'm going to swipe my whole sneaker. I'm going to click on the artboard and kind of extend it a little bit. And I'm going to take my sneaker and whoops, I got to grab the whole thing. 
and then I'm going to copy and paste it. Now, all you got to do is make one, but as you know, if you shop stores, it don't, it don't never comes as just one. It comes in um, three or more colorways. So you can make a collection if you choose to do so, and you could do that by then changing out the colors. So maybe this one becomes uh, a darker gray, right? And, this, and so can the laces. So you can kind of have fun with this. You can have different colorways, uh, different versions of the same sneaker. Really the hard part is getting the trace to happen. Once the trace happens, uh, it's very easy to then go ahead and just change out the color.